All right, so here's basically how you play teach you. Um, I won't say go over, go over all the rules uh, in this video, but I'll give you the basic way to play. Um, this is a uh, partnership game. There's four people. I would be a partner with the person sitting across the table over here. This person would be the, be the partner of the person sitting across the table over here. And you play together and help each other to basically you get all the cards dealt out and you try to get rid of all your cards. And we'll show you how you do that in just a minute. But that's the basic way that you play and the way that your tendency, you're going to have a tendency to get the most points and win the game is if you and your partner go out um, before the partners, the other partners go, go out. Even if you can help your partner go out first, um, that's actually a really good thing to do. So that's basic way to play. Now you have a regular deck of cards um, with the exception that you have four of these extra uh, what we call special cards. We'll talk about them in another video what they actually do, but you have the one, then you have the dog, then you have the phoenix, and then you have what's called the dragon. So um, I'll just put these in the cards right now just to show us kind of basically how to play. Now the first thing a person, you choose a dealer, whoever that is, and uh, you deal out all the cards, but you deal them out um, eight cards to each player, and then everybody looks at their eight cards, and then you deal out six cards to each player. So let me just do that. I think that's eight. So I would then look at my cards, along with everybody else who would look at their cards. Remember, that's my partner. And I put my cards usually in order from lowest to highest. And keeping the cards together, you're going to see why we put it in this order in, in a little bit. And then now I would look at my hand, and even though I don't know what my last six cards are, it, I have an opportunity to call what's called a grand teach you. Now, grand teach you, if I, if I call that, I'm saying that I am going to run out of all of my cards first. That means my partner would try to help me lose all of my cards, um, and these two other players would do everything they could to stop me from doing it, because if I get it, I get bonus 200 points for our team. If I don't go out first, lose all my cards first, then it's a minus 200 points. So it's pretty risky, and you don't know what all your cards are. It's pretty rare for somebody to call a Grand Teach You, but let's just say um, I obviously don't call a Grand Teach You, and we just, but everybody has an opportunity to do that. Then, after everybody has either decided to call Grand Teach You or not, you deal out the rest of the cards to the players. Now, let's just go ahead and look at my hand to show you again kind of how I arrange. Um, got these last six cards, so I'm going to continue to put my cards together, uh, lowest to highest, <clears throat> and keeping them together. So, got a couple tens here. All right. Aces are always high, by the way. Um, aces are not low. Like in some games, they could be high or low. Aces are always high. There is a one. That was a, the, one of the special cards. That's the only one in the deck. So um, after things, everybody's dealt, then what I do is I have to take three cards and hand one to each player. Um, and every other player is doing the same thing. So I'll take my maybe my two lowest cards that aren't going to be you that maybe I wouldn't use in the game that well. Um, I could go ahead and throw these last these other twos down. I might keep them because there's a pair and there's a reason why a pair is pretty good. So maybe I take these six and a nine. Um, but whatever it is, I'm going to just go ahead and do my two lowest cards. I would pass one card to there, one card to there, and then I would pass maybe the highest card that maybe doesn't go with a lot of the rest of my hand, I would pass that to my partner. And then they, people, everybody else would do the same thing. Now, I have no idea what these cards are, but let's just pretend for just pretending sakes that these are the cards that I then got back. So I would take those cards and now put them along with my cards. And that's how you would begin the game. Now. I told you about Grand Teach You's, which is after you get your eight cards. Anytime now, you, before you play your first card, you can call what's called a Teach You. If I call Teach You, and I can call any time before I play my first card, which means it could be halfway through the hand, because um, I can do what's called passing all the time. So, but anytime I play my anytime before I play my first card, I call a Teach You, and that means I'm going to go out. I'm saying I think I'm going to go out and run out of all my cards first before anybody else does, 
and that's a bonus of 100 points. If I don't get it, it's minus 100 points. It's not as risky, but it's also not as, as many points, but it is still pretty, it is still risky. Um, that's why there's a minus 100 points if I don't run out of my cards first. So those are the basic ways to do it. Now, usually in a card game, if I dealt, this person goes first, but not in teach you. Whoever has what's called the one, that was that special card, that's the, one, that's the person who goes first. So after, after everybody's got their cards, we just say, hey, who's got the one? This person, maybe my partner has the one, they say, I do, and then they play first. Now, let's say I had the one, or maybe it's my turn to play. Um, but if you have the one, you can play first. Now, it doesn't mean you have to play the one. Some people think that. It just means you get to play first. So, um, we'll talk more about the special cards in, in a little while. So let's say it was my turn, and now I can put down, and this is kind of like spades or hearts, where you put down cards, and everybody else just tries to beat those cards, beat those cards, laying down cards, uh, getting rid of their cards, and then uh, there's things that are called tricks that are formed, and people win tricks, if, if you know anything about spades and hearts, something similar to that. Uh, except, in spades or hearts or a lot of other ga trick games, you can only put down one card at a time. There's actually a couple of other different kind of combinations that you can um, put, put down in Teach You, which makes it pretty fun. So um, I could put down a single card, for instance, let's say this 8, and let's say it's my lead and I put down an 8, then everybody else would have to follow the same kind of combination, which means this person would have to put down a single card if they want to play and it has to be higher than an 8, then my partner would play if they wanted to or it has to be higher than whatever this person played or if this person passed, um, then whatever's on the table. So. Um, but it has to stay with just single cards, single cards, single cards. And let's say this person, you know, put down something higher than an eight. Uh, let's say a jack. And then my partner passed and this person passed. Uh, doesn't mean that they don't have something higher, but they just don't want to play it if they do. And let's say that I put down an ace. And then uh, this person passes, this person passes, this person passes. When there's three consecutive people that pass, the person who last played the card is the one who wins that trick. So I would take these cards put them in front of me, and now I would do what's called, I would lead, and I would lead the next thing. I could put down another single card if I want to, but like I said, there's other kind of combinations. Let me go through some of those. There's also uh, pairs, which I, I do have a lot of those pairs. Let's say I go, I, I want to put down a pair of tens. Again, this person could either play or pass, but has to put down the same kind of combination, a pair, and it has to be higher than a ten, higher than two tens. And so on. And again, when there's three consecutive passes, the person, whoever put down the last um, high, highest pair, would then take those cards and they would lead whatever combination they wanted to. But that's another one, is a pair. Then you have what's called two or more consecutive pairs. Now, two or more consecutive pairs, I actually have one. I have two fives and two sixes. Now, I can't put down two tens with them because that's not consecutive, but I could put down two fives, two sixes, and this person would have to put down at least, or whoever wants to play would have to put down at least two sixes and two sevens. Has to keep going higher. Has to end higher than what I had. Now, if I had two, six, two fives, two sixes, two sevens, two eights, I could put all of those down, and somebody would have to, again, keep the same combination. They would have to have four consecutive pairs that end higher than the, than the two eights. So that's what you do with the, with the two or more consecutive pairs. Then you have three of a kind. You can also play a three of a kind. I have one of those two. I could play three, king, three queens. Of course, only three kings and three aces can beat that. So um, I, I could put that down. When it's, again, this is only when it's your turn to lead and everybody else has to follow the same combination that the person who led uh, placed down. And then you also could have a full house the three queens and the and the two aces so i have one of those or i could have put my two fives with them like this again full house which is just much of a strong full house because you're in a full house just like in poker in order to beat this you have to beat the three of a kind uh not the pair so if i had three fives and two queens this person or whoever wants to play would have to have at least three sixes or higher with another pair but this one the only thing that can beat this is a three kings or three aces with another pair another again a better full house so those are the basic combinations there's one more and that is a straight just like in poker five or more card straight now i don't have anything even close to that i do have a nine ten queen but if i had a jack or you know something like that with the aces but or with a king and an ace um but i don't have one like that but it's just a straight doesn't matter what the suit is just like a five six seven eight nine put it down and again the people have to just beat that combination 
So again, the combinations are either a single card, you can put down a pair, you can put down two or more consecutive pairs, you can put down three of a kind, and by the way, it's five or more length straight. So I could have a straight of like 13 cards, it doesn't matter, I can go two through queen or whatever, if I had it in my hand, I could lay it all down if I, if I get the lead. And somebody would have to put down three through king in order to beat that or higher. So uh, that five or more length straight or a full house are the combinations. So it's kind of fun because you have to decide, oh, do I, keep the, do I play the fives by themselves? Do I play fives and sixes? If I did have a straight, maybe it'd be like, do I play the straight or do I keep the pairs? If somebody else played a pair of, you know, jacks, do I play the two queens or do I keep it together? It's... It's, it's really fun, but you can just keep on passing, and it might get back around to you, um, but once there's three consecutive passes, that person who put that last highest card gets to take the trick. Now, there is something else, uh, like in poker, a four of a kind, that's called a bomb. Now, if I had, for instance, one more of these queens, I would have a bomb of queens. Now, you can play a bomb even when it's not your turn. So let's say this person's playing cards, whatever combination, and you can bomb any combination that's played. So let's say there's a straight that's played, you know, like a 10-card straight, pass, pass, pass. This person's taking their cards. I say, oh, just a minute, and I might throw down my bomb on top of it, and then I would win it. Now, you can also out-bomb a bomb. So I could put down a bomb, and somebody else could put down like four kings on top of that and beat my bomb. There's also another, another kind of bomb, which is a five or more straight flush. Uh, the straight flush, of course, is all of the same suit. So it's like the straight, but it all has to be of the same suit. Five or more um, cards to make that. And that would out-bomb even four aces, because a, a higher card bomb, five cards, beats a lower card bomb, four cards. So that's another way that you can also win the trick. And it's fun to play that out of turn when the person's starting to get their cards and then you play it on top of that and you take it. So that's basic way that you play this game. Um, we'll talk about a couple other things about the special cards um, in another video. But if you can remember that, that's how you basically play the game. Um, so have fun and we'll, we'll catch you in one of the other videos and tell you a little bit more.